This is Ethan, and I'm here with Dave, and together we are Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast, episode 81-inch. On this week's episode, we interview Jason Thiessen, supervising director and executive producer of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. It's Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. It's a podcast about Weird Al. It's Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. Seriously, the whole podcast is about Weird Al. You don't have to listen, but we're glad you are. Dave, we're back to human guests on the show this week. (laughs) That was really cool getting to chat with actual Transformers last week. It was so great to talk to Hot Rod and RC last week. If you didn't hear it, it was an amazing episode. We actually got to talk to real live Transformers, performing (laughs) Transformers. They're in a band called the Cybertronic Spree, and they cover Weird Al's Dare to be Stupid song. How awesome is that? It's so cool. That was really cool to get to chat with them. I'm looking forward to on December 11th. They have their live stream. It'll start at 9 p.m. Burrito Burrito time. And we are going to be throwing a little Zoom watching party just for our listeners and, and fans of, of them and, and Weird Al. So we'll post the link over in our Facebook group. So be sure you're in the Facebook group. To double check, head over to group.2000inch.com and click join if you have not already. And of course, everyone, you're going to need to go buy your own ticket to this show. So to do that, you got to head on over to livefrominside.ca, pick up your ticket and find out more information about the show there. We want to remind everyone that all of our Inch episodes, including this one, are now on YouTube. If your podcast listening experience would be enhanced by watching a mostly static image of our logo while you listen to our soothing, award-winning voices, head on over to youtube.2000inch.com and subscribe for free. A big thank you to everyone who's already subscribed. Last week on the podcast, we mentioned that Homes for Our Troops, which is a nonprofit that benefits veterans, they auctioned off a half-hour Zoom call with Weird Al Yankovic, and we speculated that it would go for over $2,000, and boy, were we right. It hit $2,000 twice. Yes. How awesome. The winning bid was $4,051, so big congratulations to that winning bidder, and If you won, we would love to hear all about it once it happens. So please hit us up on social media at 2000 inch or give us a call at 347 spatula. And a big congratulations and a big thank you to all of our military veterans and troops. Now, this is exciting news. The Grammy nominated theme song musician, Jim Kimo West, you know, also he does guitar for Weird Al or whoever, is keeping his annual holiday show tradition this year with a virtual show. The live stream of his holiday concert will be on December 13th, starting at 7 p.m. Burrito Burrito time, which is 4 p.m. Hollywood Star time. Tickets are only 15 bucks. So head over to jimkemos.com to grab those tickets and for more information about the event. Kimo's new CD, a follow-up to the Grammy-nominated Moku Maluhia Peaceful Island, is headed to production soon and is slated for an early 2021 release. He also has contributed to Anita Lurch's upcoming CD, Love is My Religion. So we'll keep you posted when we have more information for both of these releases. And this is really exciting news. Bermuda's book, Black and White and Weird All Over is being shipped as we're speaking. They were officially released yesterday, November 17th, and Ethan and I both received our autographed books from BookSoup, including the promo postcards, and they are pretty stinking majestic. I was so happy when that showed up at my doorstep. The books are just absolutely beautiful, and I really, really loved getting the autograph, and those postcards are really great. Yeah, I'm so glad to have those postcards in my collection. They're definitely going to be a collector's item that I'm going to cherish in my collection. Now, Bermuda's been sharing some newspaper interviews on his Facebook page, and not surprisingly, the book is being very well received. If you want to check out those articles, head on over to Bermuda's Facebook page and give them a read. Now, speaking of stuff we've received recently, Dave and I have both received our Portugal the Man shirts that we talked about when we had them on the show. Yeah, I am so happy when I got this shirt because it is exactly what I was hoping it would be. It is this great, high-quality shirt, and it looks so awesome. Al's name is on the back. And it's got like everything you expect from a Portugal the Man shirt. 
It's a long sleeve shirt and one of the very few long sleeve shirts that I have in my Weird Al collection. So I'm so excited. The weather's getting cooler and I'm wearing it right now and it's really warm and I'm really excited to have it in my collection. It's a really cool shirt and if you snoozed on it, we've got some bad news. It is completely sold out, but they still have some really great products available. All of the proceeds go to charity, so check them out, ptmfoundation.org. I always love it when our listeners send us fan art, and we receive this great surprise from episode 34-inch guest, Chad Kelson, a.k.a. Metal Al. He sent us some amazing fan art. It's really great. It's a take on our caricature that Kelly Phillips did, but of course Dave and I are zombies and are ripping each other's limbs and skin off, and (laughs) it's really (laughs) gross but so funny and hilarious and so well done. So thank you so much to Chad for sending that in. We're going to post this amazing fan art over on our group, group group.2000inch.com, so you can all see it yourselves. Yes, keep that fan art coming in. We absolutely love these. And as a reminder, for fans of Metal Al, there are only a few copies left of his physical albums over on metalal.bandcamp.com. So you're going to want to get yours before it's too late. You're going to regret it if you miss out on these really cool CDs. Episode 58-inch guest, our good friend Kenneth Gwyneth, bestowed upon us this amazing, great honor, an Excellence in Podcasting Award. It is really amazing. Pretty stinking majestic. We posted a picture on Instagram, so if you've yet to see it, head over there and check it out. Kenneth, thank you so much for sending us this amazing award. We are honored to receive one of what we hope will be many podcasts award, ultimately progressing to our very own stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Now, also in the mail this week, Dave and I each received a burrito from Burrito Burrito. Turns out it got lost in the mail and it's pretty stinking. This week's episode is brought to you in part by vegan Mexican restaurant Burrito Burrito in Troy, New York, home of the two-pound double wrapped in a quesadilla Burrito Burrito. Come on down to Burrito Burrito and Burrito Burrito, your Burrito Burrito. Find them at burritosquared.com and at Burrito Squared on Instagram. And remember, not every burrito is a Burrito Burrito Burrito, but every Burrito Burrito can be Burrito Burritoed. Wait, that burrito was lost in the mail? How old was it? I mean, it was still really tasty. All right, well, while Dave gets that sorted out, I think I'm going to head over to Burrito Burrito, see if they can make me a vegan cheese sandwich to get me ready for this week's interview. We are thrilled to welcome to the podcast the supervising director and executive producer of the animated TV series My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, including the episode Pinky Pride, in which Cheese Sandwich makes his debut. So please welcome to the podcast Jason Teeson. Hey, Jason, how are you doing? Hey, guys, doing good. How are you? (laughs) We're doing great. We're doing great. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. (laughs) Yeah. So I understand there's this amazing coincidence where we were all in the same venue on the Strings Attached Tour together in Vancouver. Yeah, that was a... I was uh, lucky to see that one. It was uh, it was a good show. It was great. It was one of my favorite from the whole tour. It was just really a great venue, and I thought the orchestra was spectacular that night. Yeah, no, it was a it was an awesome uh, way to um, partake in the alness. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It was all in all an amazing night. I actually got to bring my children along for the first time. Uh, them seeing um, a Weird Al concert. Wow. And uh, they. They, I've been trying to introduce Al to them for a while, and they were they were aware, um, but uh, you know they, I don't think they quite understood, and uh, you know they didn't get all the references, but they liked the right. music, <laughs> and then uh, when we saw it in concert finally, um, they sort of put it all together and like, oh, this is what you're talking about. <laughs> um, and then they were like excited about it uh, after that. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> and, the, and the really great part is, too, that we got to uh, go meet Al after the show. Al had given me uh, some backstage passes and uh, we were uh, we were able to go back and say hello. My kids got to meet him in wow. person. Wow. Oh, that's so cool. What a great way to start off your Weird Al journey, seeing Al with a full orchestra and then meeting him after the show. That is so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was it was really good. We got photos and everything. And I, and I actually brought along. I had a cheese sandwich um, uh, figurine, uh, and I had him sign that one. Was, oh, that's it was so a great. bit of a. It was an odd little fanboy moment, but yeah. 
I, uh, I thought, hey, you know, I'm here. I got this thing. You know, I'll maybe put your name on it. <laughs> Which he was happy to do. Oh, of course. Well, now, speaking of cheese sandwich, that is, of course, for anyone who somehow doesn't know, the character Al plays in My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Now, you wrote the story for the episode Pinky Pride, where cheese sandwich is introduced. So does that mean you invented the character Cheese Sandwich? I guess so. Um, <laughs> not to toot my own sandwich, but uh, yeah, that, that, that came from me. Um, it, uh, I could tell the story of how that came about. Sure, yeah, we'd love to hear the story about how Cheese Sandwich got his origin. So uh, online, on Twitter, I, at the time I was pretty uh, t- on, the, on the Twitters, and I saw um, there was a tweet from Al that was going around that he was excited about someone who had put together like some polka to some My Little Pony um, uh, sort of montage. Okay. And uh, and it, I just thought it was like really an awesome combination um, with like the Pinkie Pie character, you know, doing all crazy stuff. And uh, it just fit the music so well. And I thought, hey, he should be on the show as a special guest. <laughs> So, uh, so I tweeted, I just tweeted at him, uh, I tweeted back to him like, Hey, would you ever like to come on to the My Little Pony anytime as a, as a, as a guest star? Just, just as like a joke, really. Mm-hmm. And of course, all the, all the fans went nuts about that. They, they loved it. <laughs> um, but, uh, I didn't hear anything back from Al. Uh, so I was just like, yeah, that was, you know, a little thing. And then I, I forgot about it. And then like a year later. Uh, I got a direct message from Al himself saying like, hey, about a year ago, you you tweeted this thing at me about coming on the show uh, and I'd love to do it. Wow. <laughs> so I was like floored. It came out of nowhere. I was like floored like, what? Al actually like tweeted at me, direct messaged me. Um, so I was like, it was like one of those kind of like drop your drop whatever you're doing moments. Um and I was just like, oh, I got to make this happen. I, I got to make this happen somehow. Um, so, so I, uh, I immediately started thinking about how could I get him on the show? How can we, you know, what do we do? How would he even fit? You know, like, um, so I, I came up with like the perfect, I mean, I thought it was the perfect character for him. Yeah. Um, like a cheese sandwich. He would be, he'd be, if he was a pony, he'd be a cheese sandwich, you know, grilled cheese sandwich. Um, even though he's a vegan, but, right. um, (laughs) and, uh, so I, I immediately thought like, okay, what, what would this cheese sandwich do in pony land? And like, well, he's kind of like a pinky pie. He's kind of, you'd be, you'd be kind of out there zany. And uh, so he would be like the and uh, another kind of Pinkie Pie character, um, and then maybe it would be a rival. And then what does uh, Pinkie Pie do? She's a party planner, so then he has to be an even better party planner. Um, and then so I came up with the whole idea of of him and her kind of having this rivalry of of who can throw the greatest party. And then because I just thought at some point we got to do stuff that's just weird, right? <laughs> and I wanted, right. to, I wanted to have like an opportunity for uh, weirdness to just be escalated. So um, that's where I was like, okay, we got one weird character and another weird character. They're going to have a weird off or they're going to have a goof off right. is what it ended right. up being. <laughs> right. Um, and then so kind of like an old spaghetti Western, you know, who can be the weirdest and, uh, and you know, they would up up each other uh, with that so I knew I just wanted that scene in there um, and then uh, of course because it's Al I was like we got to have music and then so I, I uh, I'm not sure if it was my idea to make it a musical or Hasbro's but uh, I know I presented the the premise to them mm-hmm. and uh, and they were a little skeptical at first um, but uh, they they certainly uh, came around quickly, and then next thing we knew it, um, we had Al on the show, and I couldn't believe it. <laughs> it's so incredible. And maybe my point of view is flawed because I know so many Weird Al fans. But talking to Weird Al fans who are also My Little Pony fans, it seems to be their favorite all-time episode. 
Oh, well, I mean, uh, that's good to hear. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I have a bit of a, a soft spot for it myself. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I, I, I actually got to fly down to, because I'm up in Vancouver um, in Canada. And uh, so the recording, you know, Al's down in L.A. and that's where we would record him. And so um, through much begging and pleading, uh, no, uh, <laughs> they, I, got, I got to go down and actually uh, record him, direct him in, in person in the studio. Because oh, sometimes wow. we'll do it remotely. Yeah. Sometimes um, like a, re a remote record, I mean, we, we just kind of hook up with the ISDN line. Yep. And then, uh, you know, we can do it. But in this case, I was like happy to know that there was a re uh, enough of a reason for me to go down there and, uh, <laughs> and actually do it in person. So I was like, yes, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> that was my whole goal. And so what were the recording sessions like? Are there other talent there? Are there other parts already recorded? How did that work? Um no, we, we did, uh, only Al was in the room at the time, other than me and the voice director and a couple executives and stuff from Hasbro. Mm -hmm. um, so we, yeah, we recorded him separately from everyone else because it was just logistically easier that way. Mm -hmm. um, so we had recorded everybody up in Vancouver, all the other characters, and then had like a stand-in, uh, just kind of scratch in his voice for, for playing off. And then we brought him down. And then we kind of did a, a bit of a live recording with him, uh, with the other characters in the room to kind of get, you know, the, the back and forth a bit more. So there was actually, Vancouver was on the line with us. Oh, cool. And I think we actually had some of the actors in the room that were important to the scenes. So there was a chance for him to, um, for, if I recall correctly, I mean, that was back in 2014, so. Right. <laughs> You know, my memory might be a little foggy, um, but I certainly remember that day. Uh, it, it was uh, it was quite a, in. It was actually two days that we recorded him because one day was for all the voice for the dialogue, and the other day was for uh, all the songs because he recorded like six songs with us. Right. Oh yeah. And he didn't write he didn't write the songs, um, but uh, but he sure uh, did a good job singing them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're awesome. He just lent his voice to the songs. Did he provide any music to the songs as well? Uh, no, he didn't provide any music. No, he he just lent his voice. Um, all that was done okay. by Daniel Ingram, uh, who's up in Vancouver as well. Mm -hmm. But I thought Daniel did a fantastic job, like writing songs that felt like they fit with Al, and uh, we had fun, like kind of coming up with you know cheesy lines and stuff that fit the character. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, so Al was, uh, it was such an interesting moment when he arrived. Like I was, I was nervous, you know, like this yeah. is, this is uh, uh, I'm basically tricked a celebrity into meeting me. <laughs> 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 In a way. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, he, uh, we, I was at the studio kind of waiting for him to arrive, um, pacing back and forth nervously. Um, trying to keep my cool a little bit, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't know what to expect, right? And then, and I'm expecting like fanfare and like this, you know, weird guy showing up and you know, <laughs> being crazy and everything, like, and uh, and he just he was just there all of a sudden. I heard someone's talking outside, and I went out and like, oh, there's Al, <laughs> and he was just the he was just the nicest guy, he was so just sweet and and uh friendly and I right away just completely felt relaxed. I was like, oh, I mean, this is going to be fun. This is a nice guy. Um, he felt like a friend. Yeah. So yeah, it was a really, it was really a joy to record with him. He, he's a hard worker, you know, like he is not, uh, he's not a diva in any way, <laughs> shape or form. He was very happy to be in the booth and, and took my direction. I was kind of like, I'm, I'm directing Weird Al. Um, <laughs> But uh, it, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. He he did it as many times as we asked him to, and and provided you know I ideas and stuff about the character. Um, and uh, but he was very good with keeping to the script, and and uh, he really uh, he really put a lot of work into it. So um, I was like, this guy is. I actually yeah, I actually said to him like, hey, you know. Uh, you do you do really good with the voice you know you should do more cartoon voices 
And he's like, well, write me more episodes. Write cartoons <laughs> for me. I'll do like, oh, okay. <laughs> Is that a challenge? <laughs> exactly. Write me into every episode. That's, that's what yeah. I would have taken it as. <laughs> no, he was, he was very good in the booth, for sure. How far in advance did Al have the script? Um, that's a good question. I don't really know when he got it, but we had the script for a, a good amount of time. Cause we, I mean, we worked on it for a while, but I have actually no idea when he yeah. got it. Uh, but he would have had it probably okay. uh, probably a good few weeks beforehand, maybe. Okay. I'm, I'm guessing. Maybe he could answer that. Is it fair to say that you know the, the concept of the character in this whole episode was entirely written for Al? This wasn't something that you know was, was written to fit Al. It was just completely created. Yeah, this was completely written for him. Like, uh, like I said, this, this completely came from me having that interaction on Twitter mm -hmm. and then just going like, I got to get him on the show. And I just, <laughs> you know, forced an episode in. Uh, luckily, we were luckily we were writing that season at that time. I think it was season four. Um, and uh, so there was a interest in, you know, we need more episodes kind of thing. There's 26 episodes in a season. Wow. And uh, we were sort of somewhere in the early stages of the of midway point. So, um, I had an opportunity to to slip slip one in kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, fans and followers of the show know that Al did reprise his role in season nine. That's right. And the cheese sandwich character has shown up in different episodes and now in merchandise and in the comic book series. Were you involved with any of that? Uh, unfortunately, no. I was I was off the series um, doing the Pony movie at the time that they uh, were doing season. Well, actually, season nine was after the movie, but I was out, I was finished the movie, and uh, they were wrapping up season nine. So I knew he was in season nine, um, and uh, but I had nothing to do with that, mm -hmm. um, other than other than creating it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm curious, you know, when you were creating the character for Al's initial episode, was there any backstory that wasn't shown in the, the episode that you had created for the character? Um, not really, no. that I, I hadn't really thought that deeply on okay. it. Uh, <laughs> you didn't, like, you know, <laughs> name his parents and, you know, his favorite color and that kind of stuff? <laughs> no, no, it was only on, it was on a need-to-know basis. Right, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, I think we kind of figured it out as we went along a little bit. Like uh, Amy Keating Rogers, who wrote the episode, wrote the script, um, I think she probably had a little more of a backstory for him uh, as that she was thinking of mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and sort of put that in there. I don't know if you talked to her, but uh, she probably had a little bit more in her mind as to what the, the backstory was. I just I just wanted a crazy character to play <laughs> off of Pinkie Pie. <laughs> I, I am curious what the uh, what the breakdown is for writing the story versus writing the script. Is it a collaborative process? Um, I mean, I, I wasn't really that involved with the writers. I was involved more with the, uh, the head story editor okay. and the executive. So I provided my uh, premise and then we discussed it and then um, they went off and broke the story into an outline um, which then I read and then discussed and then gave my feedback and then they took it to the next level and then I came right. and gave my feedback again. So it was just sort of, it, it was indirect sort of collaboration. But it, everything in animation, everything in animation is collaboration because you know one person can really do it all unless you're kind of crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and some people do. Um, but uh, yeah, it's generally like a lot of people giving a lot of input along all along the way, you know? Mm -hmm. So like the writer gives their input, which inspires uh, other people like board artists and, and animators and, and you know, people who, the voice actors and everybody puts something into it along the way. So um, it becomes its own thing by the end. It's never exactly the same as the, as the beginning. Although it did turn out uh, better than I expected, which is the goal, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's a good transition. I want to ask you, how did you get involved in My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, that whole series? Um, I was uh, working at uh, DHX Media, the, the studio. Actually, it was I think at the time it was called uh, Studio B. 
it went through a couple of name changes since then. But um, uh, I was working on another show and then uh, they just approached me and said like, hey, we got this, this property coming in through the studio called My Little Pony. And we were wondering if you'd be interested in being the supervising director. So I took a look at it and uh, I saw that, you know, Lauren Faust uh, had created it and, and developed it. And so uh, right away I knew this has got to be good because I knew of her and uh, I knew how, how good she was. So um, then when I read the Bible and uh, like the, the, the show Bible, not the Bible Bible, <laughs> <laughs> and saw the designs and, and the characters and everything, I was just like, whoa, this is going to be great. I could tell right away, like this, this is something special. So um, I just jumped on it and I was like, yeah, I'll do it for sure. Please let me do it. <laughs> um, when I and so we did a little test animation, just like a minute or so long of just like a little quick script, just to kind of see how the animation and the characters would look on screen, and uh, just tried it out a bit. And at first, when I was doing that, I was like, "Oh, this is going to be cute, sort of Saturday morning, you know, show, kids show, like sort of what you what you would expect." Um, and uh, then. When I saw the first episode script, which was a two-parter, so it was like 44 minutes, um, and I read that, I was like, oh my goodness, this is a feature film. <laughs> like, it really <laughs> felt a lot more like an epic story, um, like a big story, and it had all this world and lore, and the characters were so rich. I'm like, I got to rethink how I'm going to take this on like this isn't going to be some cute kid show this is going to be like a like a epic fantasy mm -hmm. um so it sort of steered the way that i approached it well yeah the show has such an amazing devoted fan following to it then what is it like working on a show that has such an amazing devoted following i mean it's uh, certainly inspiring you know like it's good to know when you're making a show that people are actually watching it and liking it <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the internet is is good for that. I mean, in the in the old days, in the old days, um, when you make a show and you put it out there, the only way you know anyone's watching is the Nielsen ratings or what the network says is people are saying, you know, uh, or like fan letters that come in. Like there wasn't any way of knowing how people felt about it. And then even through the internet age, it's still there wasn't much uh, feedback until social media came in. And then you're seeing um, fans put up posts online and, and respond to things like right away after a show comes out. So like after the first episode aired, we saw people responding to it days later. Um, right. And right away we could see what people are saying and, and reacting. And it was like, whoa, mm -hmm. um, the feedback was, was tremendous. So it really helped us want to do better, want to make it as good as we could. We knew people cared um, as much as us, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it, yeah. it felt worth it, right? Yeah, that makes total there's, sense. There's a, yeah. There's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that goes into animation. So you want to know at the other end that uh, that people are really appreciating it. So it really, really helps. And I got to ask you, what did you think about the whole brony phenomenon? I mean, did you see that coming at all? I have to admit I did not. Um, <laughs> I don't know if anyone did. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I was kind of hoping that there would be some response, but I thought, like, the, the demographic is, you know, young kids, so there's not a lot of young kids online, so it wasn't really expected. Um, and then when I started seeing, you know, older uh, demo people and, and, and men, young men and older men. And I was like, wait, this is, this is a show about pink ponies and sparkles and rainbows. This isn't something guys usually respond to. <laughs> not in, not in a positive way. Anyway, I thought like, oh, they're probably being cynical, ironic, you know, dudes. And it became quickly apparent like, oh, no, no, I think they're actually legit liking this. <laughs> well, this is, this is new. Um, and I'm like, well, you know, that's an initial reaction. It'll probably go away and nah. <laughs> and here we are now. 
<laughs> yeah, here we are now. <laughs> what, 10 years later? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I remember as soon as the merchandise for Cheese Sandwich started coming out, I had to be really careful. I was like, I, you know, I don't want people to think I'm a brony, but, you know, I also watched the episode. I'm like, I actually kind of like this. <laughs> oh, good. That's, that's, yeah. that's a good... Uh, it's a gateway, Al. It is. Pony. It is. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I have uh, I have three or four Al. I actually got a a cheese sandwich that I sort of got right from the Hasbro factory when they were first making them. I think they weren't even on the market yet, and I oh. was there on a on a work trip, um, and they were given a tour and stuff. And then I found that, and I, or uh, I think some of them, one of the persons there told me. Uh, that they had one and I was like can I get one can I get one of those owls <laughs> and so I managed to um I managed to score one um so uh that was pretty exciting then I got some others since then that is so great <laughs> yeah um did you have you I'm sure you guys have, yeah you've seen the episode I suppose of course um, yeah the uh, I, I'm looking at the boneless uh, rubber chicken puppet right now, <laughs> which I made. Oh, that's for the awesome! Show. <laughs> oh, so the the live action where the boneless uh, chicken is dancing, right? That's the, what you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. I saved it. Um, I still have it. <laughs> that's so great. <laughs> I I felt like in in the episode there just needed to be you know, some moment of really out of world, you know, craziness. Happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, so as the episode was unfolding, uh, I thought, okay, we got to do something with boneless. And, and, uh, as the show was being storyboarded, um, by a good friend of mine, actually, um, Scott Underwood, he, uh, I, I right away, as soon as I got this episode, I was like, we got to get Scott Underwood to storyboard this. This is, this is, the dream um he's a good friend of mine from <laughs> high school and the two of us were weird al fans together wow we went to several concerts together um and uh and uh, we were just like weird al fans through and through uh, so i knew as soon as and he's a storyboard artist in the animation industry and a damn good one too um and perfect for a weird al episode so i was just like Get Scott on the phone. We got to get him on this show. <laughs> so uh, in the episode, when you yeah, when you see all that kind of really craziness, like the the tank with the pelican shooting out of it, and right. all that that's Scott. That's all Scott. You know. Oh, I love that's, it. That's um, purely from him because I I was kind of like, just go crazy, man. Just do it. Just go crazy. Um, <laughs> So, but there was an there was a scene where the the uh, in the song um, Boneless uh, did a little dance number, and I was like, okay, this is it. This is the spot. I was looking for a spot. This is the spot where we're gonna do something out of world. Um, and uh, I've done it for Pinkie Pie before, where there was a, a scene where we dive into her mind and see what she's thinking. And then I'm like, okay, that's got to be something out of world too. This is for a different episode. Mm -hmm. And so we did like a felt stop motion sequence uh, out of real felt. And I, I just did that in my ba in my basement. Oh, that's um, so cool. So, uh, yeah. And, you know, nobody thought it was, they were like, oh, really, you're going to do that? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do this. <laughs> and so I just went for it. Um, and so same with this. I'm like thinking to myself, how am I going to get boneless in real life that's on model enough that it feels like it's in the show? Because you could just buy a rubber chicken, but... Eh, it looks different. It's yeah. not quite the same. <laughs> so I had to like kind of invent this idea. I bought some balloons and I filled it with with rice and and a ping pong ball for a head. And I tried to put it all together <laughs> and made this like rubber balloon um, chicken thing, and then held it up <laughs> and uh, held it up with with the fishing line in front of a <laughs> of a velvet curtain, and then just bounced it off the ground and I'm like oh that works that's good enough <laughs> it's just stu it's just stupid enough to work oh it's so great <laughs> so I, yeah i'm glad that worked out so you mentioned being a fan of al in high school what was your first time hearing al oh that goes back even further um i would say uh back when i was like 
six, seven or eight, actually. Wow. Um, another, a different friend of mine at the time was living in Chilliwack at the time. <laughs> Chilliwack. <laughs> which is a, is a you know, uh, we were just talking about Chilliwack. You were mentioning it. That's, that's my hometown. That's where I was born and raised. Yes. Before the interview <laughs> yes. started, we learned that you are, in fact, from Chilliwack, which is a very important town in the lore of Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. So that, that's a really great Easter egg. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that was where I heard my first Weird Al song. It was, uh, I think it was Bad. Uh, or fat, yeah, the, the bad um, parody, right? Um, and uh, it's either that or it was uh, earlier. I'm really trying to think back to my childhood here. <laughs> it might have been, it might have been. Uh, girls just want to have lunch. Oh, um, <laughs> it might have been, because I think that was from the album before that. I'm not sure. I should know this stuff. I'm looking at your date of birth, and I'm trying to do the math in my head of eight or nine. Yeah, it's, I think girls just want to have lunch. That makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the first time. And my friend uh, played it for me. He's like, you you got to hear this. It's so funny. <laughs> and he played it, and I'm like, what? want to have lunch? Like, <laughs> it was so new to me, you know, that the t I had never heard of, like, a parody song before like that was a new concept in my mind that someone could take an existing song that's famous and then do like a, a funny version of it that kind of makes fun of it a little bit uh and uh, but in a f good way like it was it was such a, a hilarious mind-blowing moment yeah. <laughs> in my life that it sort of <laughs> it colored my life from then on so it was a huge influence on on my humor and 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 everything you know i can tell that you know al was definitely on your mind in working on the show from the beginning i found an old reddit ama it was back you know just after the first season aired oh, really? and someone asked you if you could choose any song in the known universe to have a version done in the show what would it be and you said i've answered this 10 times in my head and still can't decide but i guess something by weird al so it, it sounds like Weird Al was just destined to be on the show from the very beginning. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, I think because uh, Pinkie Pie just sort of felt, I mean, she was sort of, people ask me who is my favorite pony from the show. And, um, you know, I love them all. They're all equally good. But <laughs> um, the, the, Pinkie Pie just, uh, she stands out to me because she can do all the zany, wacky stuff and break the rules of the universe. Right. And, um, you know, because everyone else can't, it's more fun that she can. <laughs> um, and uh, that sort of humor uh, just, you know, fits so well with a uh, Weird Al sensibility. And um, so, yeah, it just made sense to me that he would fit in the series. So I was really, that's why I think I was so excited when he was like, happy to do it and and hasbro agreed i was like my wish came true <laughs> now i hope i'm not spoiling anything for anyone but in the final episode of the series there is a revelation that Pinkie pie in the future is actually married and has a child with cheese sandwich yeah i uh, i heard about that actually and again i had nothing to do with it yeah uh, <laughs> Because it, it was something that I only found out about afterwards. Um, but uh, I'm really happy for them. I'm sure they're going to make great parents. And uh, I'm sure that kid's going to turn out totally normal. <laughs> <laughs> that would be ironic. That'd be kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I also, I think Al was also motivated or interested in doing the show because his daughter was interested in the show, from what I understood. Oh, very cool. Um, and I think that also helped... Uh, make it happen and I kn and he said he he watches it as well and he likes it um so that was high high marks for me that al's watching a show i make yeah and, uh, <laughs> and likes it <laughs> um yeah he, he's just such a nice guy i mean we we kind of i feel like we sort of hit it off a bit and uh, you know we spent some good time together uh in the recording mm-hmm and then um, he he was so nice to uh, actually send me a copy of his album, um, Mandatory Fun, when it came out. I just found it one day in my inbox. Al's like, hey, I'd love you to have this album. 
Wow. It just came out, and I'm like, what? Al just gifted me his album. <laughs> I was pretty excited about that. And so I made sure to, you know, make sure I went to as many concerts as I could, you know, get to. And, um, and he, again, like, uh, was nice enough to contact me about it. And he, he actually said, oh, well, I'm going to be in Vancouver um, on such and such a date. Uh, you, would you like some tickets to my show? And so I'm like, really? You're going to just give me tickets? Um, I, I already bought them. <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll be there anyway. It's like, oh, well, you know, in that case, why not, how about some backstage passes? And I can meet you after the show. So I was, like, really happy about that. So I actually met him a few times after the show uh, because of that. So every time he comes anywhere near me uh, in my city, if it's Seattle or Vancouver or wherever, um, I try to make sure I go, and then he's always nice enough to, to offer some backstage passes, and I, uh, and I go and I hang out with him. What a guy. Um, Al's just so, the nicest, isn't he? Yes, so nice. <laughs> and, uh, and the one year that he came to Vancouver, I actually was able to get extra tickets for backstage um, for the people who worked on the show. On oh, Pinky Pride. very so, cool. Yeah, the voice actress who who did uh, Pinkie Pie, um, my co-director and the storyboard artist, um, Scott, all we all got to go together and see the concert and then meet him afterwards. And uh, so that was that was a nice treat. That is so fun. You know, we were talking a little bit off the air about Vancouver, because, of course, Dave and I were there and we, we had an extra day in the area. And tell me if this is familiar to you. We went to this place called Grouse Mountain. And we saw a show oh, that yeah. it, it really changed our lives. It's called the Lumberjack Show. Have, have you ever heard of that or been to it? Yeah, I, I certainly do. <laughs> Did it affect you the, the way that it affected us? Um, uh, I don't know. How did it affect you? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a great show. Yeah. I, don't get me wrong. I mean, they said it was world famous. Yeah. And they had people come from all over the world just to see that lumberjack show. <laughs> mm. I mean, <laughs> if anything, if Vancouver or Canada is famous for anything, it's the lumberjack show. That's right. <laughs> um, where you could watch a fully grown man climb pole and cut a log. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's a it's a great tradition. Okay, lumberjacks are are important people. I have them in my family. Of course, of course. Yeah. So a few years ago, Al released his squeeze box set of every album he's ever done. It included was this rarities disc, and on it was Super Duper Party Pony, which was really great to finally get as a collector in a physical form. Do you know if there's any? plans or thoughts to release the rest of the songs well i sure hope so but i i don't know of any um i uh i'm actually not sure how al got that on there because hasbro can be uh pretty um <laughs> you know <laughs> tough, <laughs> tough negotiator on that um so i'm really glad that's on there too uh, uh so i have no idea i would i would like to i i actually I actually have all of the MP3s from the show, <laughs> from making it. <laughs> so hmm. I've got my own Pinky Pride album hmm. uh, for my personal use. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Yeah, Dave and I are on our way to uh, Chilliwack right now. Uh <laughs> oh, really? That's not where I'll live, so that's going to be the wrong place to go. <laughs> well, well, we'll stop in Vancouver on the way. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. It, you know, stop, Vancouver is one of those, you know, little uh, side stops on the way to Chilliwack. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> it's where you want to be. That's right. <laughs> Cultus Lake. Cultus Lake. That's the, that's the lake for me. It's the lake that's right uh, next to Chilliwack uh, City there. Oh, okay. It's where all the, it's all the, where all the wackians go to cool down on a hot summer day. We all like to go to Cultus Lake. Is that what residents of Chilliwack are called, wackians? Uh, they are now. <laughs> I love it. I mean, uh, some... Some might say whacker, but uh, I'll just say wacky. Yeah. 
I like that. Okay. <laughs> I like it. The chili mans or the wackians or the whackers. Uh, <laughs> all all are acceptable, I suppose. Now, I am curious, just to go back to Pinky Pride, you know, there's a lot of amazing Al references in there, you know, in playing the accordion, the uh, Hawaiian shirt, the, the glasses. Now, were those from you or is that just, you know, just everyone wanted to include Al stuff? Um, I mean... I, I'd say everyone, uh, I certainly was pushing for Hawaiian shirt and, uh, all that stuff. Yeah. So it, and the glasses, we, we went through several iterations of, of cheese sandwich, uh, to get to the one we have. So there are other rejected, um, uh, cheese sandwich, weird Al uh, versions, uh, some where we, I think we tried a mustache and, uh, <laughs> But there, it was just kind of odd. On a, it just looked a little strange on a pony. I can imagine. <laughs> and it, yeah, made him a little bit older than I think the the show was trying to make him. So we were like, ah, we can do without the stash. He's got no stash. We can do without the stash. I love it. <laughs> yeah, but if you if you notice his cutie mark, that's the little picture on the side of his butt. Right. It's called a it's called a cutie mark. It's a whole thing. <laughs> um, the, the the his his mark is actually a cheese sandwich with it's cut in like a like a grilled cheese sandwich that's been cut in half and pulled apart, and then the grill marks are like keys of the accordion, and then the cheese in the middle is like the bellows. Um, so it is a cheese sandwich accordion it's so perfect i don't know if anybody picked up on that or not but I, yeah, that is a great little easter egg I'm yeah so glad you guys included that i don't know if it was too subtle maybe it was too subtle I don't know. are there any other deeper references to al in that episode or, or anywhere else in the series we should uh, be looking for um i'm trying to think uh if there was one in that episode, I mean, I'm not sure. I don't recall uh, anything else uh, that was really, really Al centric. Um, but it was just like the the kind of the weirdness of everything. Yeah. Just going with like, <laughs> what's totally weird that you know he he talks about food a lot. A lot of his he has a lot of songs about food, so he wanted to put food stuff in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then all the different types of cheeses. Like cheese is funny. Um, and, uh, <laughs> but the, 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 the ponies are all vegetarians as well. So, um, we couldn't get a Twinkie wiener sandwich in there, <laughs> to... <laughs> but uh, there is actually, uh, in the, in the My Little Pony movie, um, I would, I really pushed, uh, to try and get a uh, weird Al cameo in there. Um, and uh, try as I might, I couldn't quite get Hasbro to uh, agree to bringing Al in. Okay. Um, they were focused on other things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they're just, uh, it was hard to find a perfect spot for him. And so it, I couldn't get it to happen. But there was one moment where in the opening uh, song, or um, not the opening song, but in the opening act, um, there's a song where Pinkie Pie and is singing and... Uh, about the big party they're going to put together. And at one point, uh, she fires off a cannon and it's cheese sandwiches cannon. And he's there for like maybe a second. Oh, cool. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I'll count uh, that. (laughs) Yeah, that's one. That's one. And then after, after the pinky pride episode, there might be a hidden, hidden, uh, cheese sandwich somewhere in there in the mix. Uh, sometimes people sneak them in, in the background. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Cause there's so many people who work on it. And, uh, sometimes people put little jokes in the backgrounds and stuff that uh, people pick up on much later. Right. Um, or right away and as the case may be, um, but yeah, it was. Uh, it, you, you may find him somewhere. That's great. But that means you have to watch every episode <laughs> from season four on, <laughs> frame by frame, <laughs> frame by frame. Look every inch. Um, but that uh, that that episode was was quite a big episode actually, um, because of all the craziness and everything we had to create and animate. You know, pelicans flying out of out of uh, cannons and. <laughs> And um, 
cows in weird places and <laughs> uh, diving boards of, of cheese and stuff or d diving into vats of cheese. Um, yeah, so it, it was a it was a tricky episode and that it was like a musical. It had six ep six songs, I believe, five or six songs. Anyway, that's no small feat to, to squeeze into 22 minutes. Yeah. Like, you know, each song's about at least a minute or two minutes and that eats away at your story time. So every song has to count and be uh, a part of it. Um, and so you don't like lose your story in the mix. <laughs> um, but uh, he, he was, uh, I have to say, recording him on those songs was uh, also, that was the second day. And um, I couldn't believe how much stamina this guy has. <laughs> I, I was like, we were recording and recording and like Van, Daniel, our composer, he's, he is like a perfectionist. So he wanted to get everything just right. And uh, Al, of course, he is also a perfectionist. So he was happy to do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we took take after take after take and we're doing every little thing. And um, it was really, really cool to see him work. And uh, and we, at some point we were like ready to take a break and we're like, Al, you want a break? You want to take a little take five and drink or you need anything? He's like, nope, we can keep going as long as you like. <laughs> and I'm like, really? <laughs> you just you don't stop. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, he was uh, amazing. And I think uh, all his touring and, you know, he's just he he, he can hold a whole concert right on a daily, weekly basis. For months on end, so uh, those lungs are well exercised. I did want to mention a previous guest that we had on the program. We had on episode 42 inch William Anderson, who is the score composer for My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Did you know his connection to Al? Yes, I did. Um, he actually helped put us together in a way uh, when we were, you know, talking about um, doing the having having al on the show i mentioned it to will and he was like did you know i was in al's band and i'm like what <laughs> he's like, yeah I with him and i'm on the album i recorded on the album and i'm like oh my goodness i i had no idea and he, yeah he's a direct connection to al right there um and so uh yeah uh he, i think he he actually managed to to speak to al about it a bit so there it it helped solidify the agreements and stuff <laughs> to make it happen. Um, so that was cool. Yeah, and Will is an amazing uh, score composer as well. I, I was really happy to work with him. Uh, he did every. I think he, he scored every single episode of that series from the very beginning to the very end. Wow. Um, yeah, it... Uh, there was nobody else uh so like i was we had daniel ingram who wrote songs but the songs were different from the score right um the actual like background music sure. and stuff but uh yeah will will was an amazing guy to work with i really really miss him he's still with us but right. i haven't worked with him for a <laughs> right, <little> right. While. <laughs> right i didn't want to give the wrong impression he's very well and alive and everything <laughs> yeah, I think Will mentioned on our podcast that he had retired pretty recently. So, oh, really? That, that's uh, what you're. Yeah, that's what you're referencing. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know, but uh, I think I think he was sort of mentioning that he might be hanging up his keys, um, uh, his piano keys uh, soon. Um, but he actually moved. <laughs> he actually moved to Vancouver at one point. Um, because he he liked it here so much uh <laughs> and to be closer to us on the production um because he was always in la before so we'd always have these like meetings over skype and stuff and right it's, it's always better when you're in the room with someone definitely um, and uh and he just saw a lot of uh, good stuff in vancouver i guess and he came up and he was living here for a while so great <laughs> it's a beautiful part to visit. I mean, Ethan and I had a wonderful time when we were over there on the West Coast. Sweet. Well, uh, yeah, I guess that was just last year. Yeah. <laughs> it, it seems like a decade ago, but yeah, it was only last year. Yeah. <laughs> was it only a year ago? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I guess there won't be. Well, I don't want to make a downer out of this or anything. There won't be a concert yeah. for a little while, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait, but. Eventually, we'll get to see Al again. <laughs> yeah. 
I actually, as a, as a, I don't know how old I was. I might have been like 12, maybe. I, I can't pinpoint the year, but I remember actually writing a letter to uh, John Bermuda Schwartz um, and uh, the, the drummer in the band um, and actually got a letter back from him directly. Wow. Uh, oh, wow. And that was that was another connection I had. I just randomly wrote him a letter because I, I don't know, I just was a fan of him at the time <laughs> and still am. <laughs> He's a cool guy. Yeah. Uh, and uh, such a versatile drummer, you know, he could do so many different styles. Um, so, yeah, I was kind of I was a fan of him specifically at that time, uh, too. And I just wanted to reach out because I think I think it was because I was interested in drums. I was really getting into drums and I was uh, thinking about like who a drum hero would be. And I went straight <laughs> to the, the Al band. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, he was very he wrote me a very nice letter. I don't have it. I don't know what happened to it. Um, I don't even know if it was a physical letter or if it was an email. It might have been an email. That's that's one for my foggy memory. <laughs> I guess it depends on how old you were. Yeah, I guess so. I know I know I had a computer at that time and internet was I think around. So I seem to remember sitting at a computer reading the message. So it, it probably was an email of some sort. Uh, would have been very early days. Yeah. And I think only like a little while later, maybe a couple years later, I I went to an Al concert and talked to him after the show, talked to John and mentioned it. And I think he said he remembered me. Oh, wow. And my letter. But I, I assume he says that to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who wrote the thing. I mean, it's probably not every day he gets a letter from a kid from Chilliwack, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe. I was in Langley at the time. Okay, okay. Um, a totally <laughs> different city. <laughs> so, unfortunately. I guess I could have lied and just said, yeah, I was chinchilla wax. <laughs> <laughs> that would be lying. Now, Jason, if people want to follow your adventures online, we can follow your Twitter, at Golden Russet. Do you have a story behind the Golden Russet name? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Um I mean, I like potatoes. That's that's one. <laughs> and, Fair. Uh, over the yeah, over the years, I was uh, I've sort of you know come up with my own uh, cartoon ideas and stuff. And I I had a, a cartoon idea that involved a character who is a potato, and uh, he's just a potato. Like he is, he's just an inanimate potato um, that can come to life if need be. Um, <laughs> But uh, he was the golden russet <laughs> potato. He was a, you know, a fifth dimensional god from another di another place, um, <laughs> with an all-seeing eye. So I was like, yeah. The, when the Hotmail asks me, what do you want to do for your email address? I was like, the golden russet, because <laughs> uh, I, I kind of like the juxtaposition of the two things, like golden which is shiny and bright and you know important and it's meaningful uh, it's costly and then russet <laughs> which is usually associated with like brown and dirty and gritty and just like this, these two things don't go together um so i i like that juxtaposition in the word well there is a variety of apple called the golden russet have you ever had one that's yes there is um and, and uh, i do like them oh cool and i grow russet potatoes in my backyard they're golden russet potatoes um and i, I grow them in my backyard wow so, uh, i'm all potato man <laughs> would, would you say that you are addicted to spuds i might be i just might be uh, it's been a problem for years but uh, I think I'm coming around to it. Uh, I, I, I'm able to admit it. That's, yes. That's my first step. 
I just wanted to touch a little bit back on this concept that you came up with of the goof off and how <laughs> great of a concept that is and how I think that all differences should be solved by goof offs. Imagine how much better this world would be is if every, anybody who had a difference of opinion got together and just had a goof off, how much more fun everything would be. I want to live in that world, please. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, that that is like, you know, the ultimate creativity. You know, how do you, I mean, I guess it could get out of hand. But. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not when you have rubber chickens that are dancing. Yeah. I mean, how can it get out of hand with dancing rubber chickens? <laughs> oh, you don't know. Um, but yeah, that would be, that would be amazing. And you just have like somebody judge who who is the most goofy um or or is it just something that keeps going until somebody just concedes right um, and maybe maybe it's neither maybe there's a whole other scoring system that is very befitting of a goof off well i think you're onto something with the goof off yeah. there as long as the as long as everyone's laughing the world can't be so bad. <laughs> Excellent. Well said. <laughs> Jason, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. Thank you. This has just been so much fun getting to hear about, you know, your your work on My Little Pony and your love of Al. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you. It was a real pleasure. I had, I had a blast. Thank you so much to Jason Teeson. That was so much fun talking to him. And, you know, before the interview, Ethan... You and I were talking to Jason, and he mentioned that he was from this little town in British Columbia, Canada. And we both kind of questioned each other. We said, by any chance, is it Chilliwack? And it turns out it was Chilliwack. <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> now, be sure to check out Jason over on Twitter, twitter.com slash golden russet. He posts a lot of fun stuff, including puppet shows that his daughters make. It's really fun to check out. <laughs> I also want to give a big thanks to our friend and incredible artist, Andres, who suggested to us, hey, you should have the person who invented cheese sandwich on the podcast. So we did. So check out his incredible art on Instagram, including a new piece featuring myself and 58-inch guest Kenneth Gwinnup by heading over to Instagram.com slash S-M-O-L underscore A-N-D-R-I-U-S-H-A. It was so much fun talking to Jason off the air about Chilliwack. It makes me want to go back to British Columbia and visit Chilliwack. I really wish they had their own tourism agency like our friends Discover Darwin, promoting tourism in Darwin, Minnesota. Not only is historic Darwin, Minnesota uh, beautiful, it's also wet. Darwin, Minnesota is home to the picturesque Turtle Lake, the hometown Darwin Lake that is both 450.02 acres and looks nothing at all like a turtle. But does Turtle Lake have turtles? Well, according to the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources website, well, there's no mention of turtles on it. So how did it get its name? I don't know. I'm not a mind reader for crying out loud. Well, Ryan Lavelle of St. Paul gives Turtle Lake four out of five stars and says, shh. This lake is the best kept secret for crappies. While Ryan sure likes his crappies, the lake is anything but. So visit Darwin, Minnesota on your next expedition. Discover Darwin, more than just the twine ball. And after you visit Darwin, be sure to visit discoverdarwin.biz. Each week we can bring you this podcast absolutely free thanks to sponsors like Brito Brito, Angel Valenswell, and his son David Cash, Discover Darwin, Jackson Scoggins, and all of our amazing Patreon supporters like Kenneth, Mike, and so many more. Revenue from our incredible supporters on Patreon.com slash 2000inch is how we can afford to continue doing what we love, which is making fantastically fun, funny, and family-friendly Weird Al podcasts for you each and every week. We'd absolutely appreciate your consideration in joining our pretty stinking majestic Patreon family for as little as $1 per month. Another way to support the podcast is to pick up and wear merchandise from the official Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al Podcast merchandise shop. Head on over to shop.2000inch.com for t-shirts, tote bags, mugs, face masks, and more. Be sure to catch the new video by The Love Songs where four episode 46-inch guest Craig Bill Myers cover the song Bluffing Game while wearing their green 2000-inch shirts. 
And our friend Mike Minnick, he took time away from writing parody songs about our podcast to send us a photo of his red reverse logo, Gill and Chill hoodie. It looks great, Mike. Find us online at weirdalpodcast.com or 2000inch.com and please join our Facebook group by heading to group.2000inch.com for episode discussions and other exclusive content. Don't forget to tag fun Weird Al or podcast related posts on social media using hashtag 2000inch and hashtag Gill and Chill and follow at 2000inch on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Make sure to share our posts, tag yourself in photos of you wearing official Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast merchandise, tell your friends about the podcast, and we love it when you leave us voicemail on our 27-hour-a-day podcast hotline, 347 Spatula. You might even hear your message on the air, the 347 Spatula hotline, the official hotline of Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast, is sponsored by Angel Valenzuela and David Cash, two amazing Weird Al fans and podcast supporters. You already know where to find us, but do yourselves a favor and head on over to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon Music, or the podcast app of your choice and hit the subscribe button to ensure you don't miss new episodes. The new episodes drop every Wednesday. You can listen to every episode of the podcast and check out our past guests on 2000inch.com or weirdalpodcast.com, as well as heading to youtube.2000inch.com. Thanks again to this week's guest, Jason Thiessen. Thanks again to Metal Al, Kenneth, and Andres. And thanks to all of our listeners, subscribers, Patreon supporters, and sponsors, and everyone who made this episode and podcast possible. So, Dave, how's that burrito, 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 burrito that was lost in the mail treating you? Honestly, this burrito, 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 burrito makes me want to throw up. So I can taste it again. It was so delicious. You think we can get them to send us some more? was Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al Podcast, episode 81 Inch, not the nerdiest podcast Chris the Glove Taylor's been on. Is that it? It's all done? Yeah, unless there's something we missed. Uh, I did. No, was, no. Was, did I, we miss anything? Maybe I should have had a more of a, of a longer salutation at the end there. I don't know. Go ahead. Um... <laughs> Oh, that's fine. I, I, now I don't have anything.